Today I have new Wacom Bamboo Ink Plus. This promises full Windows ink support and works across a multitude of different uh, Windows 10 devices. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Hey, I'm John. I do reviews on devices used to create digital art, traditional art, novel writing, and illustration. If you don't want to miss any of my content, please click that subscribe button and click the bell and you'll be notified whenever I post new content. The contents of the box are simple. It comes with both the pen, a nifty little nib case, and a USB-A to USB-C converter. The USB-C side is going to be used for charging. That's right, this pen does not have batteries, it is rechargeable. Let's pay some bills. Uh, this is based on the UPP, the Universal Pen Protocol. Technology supports is Wacom Active ES 1.0 and 2.0. Microsoft Pen Protocol, that's the Entreg stuff, both 1.5 and 2.0. It has two selectable buttons, we'll talk about that. Sports pen pressure up to 4096, depends on the device. Does support tilt, we'll talk about that. It's a Bluetooth pen, I can't pronounce that battery type. Wacom says the battery is going to stay charged for 10 days at about 2 hours a day, times 5 times a week. And it takes about 3 hours for a full charge. Now you might ask, John, why would I go third party when I can get a Surface Pro pen or I can just use the pen that it's included with my Lenovo or HP? The reason is, this pen is trash. Now then, let's look at the Bamboo Ink Plus. This is really a nice pen. Now you'll notice, as opposed to the pens that come with the Cintiqs and such, these pens are more designed to work with, you know, note taking and things like that. Meaning, they're a lot more streamlined, a lot thinner. This actually feels, if you didn't know any better, like a standard actual ink pen. There's a button on top here where the eraser would normally be. That's used to actually pair the device, you know, turn the Bluetooth on so it's discoverable. The first button here is actually power, and the two buttons together cycle between different device support. What I mean is, if you're using it on a Lenovo Yoga or an HP or something like that that has Wacom AES built in, uh, and then you're going to switch to maybe, you know, a Surface Pro or something like that that has Entrig, you're going to have to switch between this. Now, the pen itself cannot be paired to two devices at the same time, so this is an unlikely scenario, aside from maybe the first time when you're setting it up. As mentioned, the pen supports tilt. Make sure you check your device for proper compatibility. This pen also features light touch responsiveness and pressure sensitivity, meaning, you know, when you've touched the pen to the glass, even very lightly, you're going to get that very light sketch feel. The nib case is pretty easy. On the top here, you have the nib remover. Okay, you're going to put it in just like this. You're going to slide it over and you're going to pop the nib out. I'm not going to do it now. It's going to whip across the ceiling and this video is going to be a mess. If you actually want to see the included nibs, it comes with three different ones, soft, firm, and things like that. And it's nice that they label them so you know which one is which. You slide the thing closed and once again, Wacom has come up with a solution so that your nibs are not all over the place and you're not losing. Okay, believe it or not, we have a Surface Book uh, set up and we are about to use a Wacom branded pen on it. Um, just, you know. First initial impression. The pen keeps up with the cursor, which I expect because uh, that is one of the strengths of these um, sort of battery powered um, digitizers, AES and Entrig both. Now where we've had some trouble is we've had some trouble in the corners, which I'm not seeing with any of this. Everything seems accurate. I can even click this little and you know the surface has this uh, you know super high resolution. I did uh, down res it to 1080p just for the purposes of this video. Because we want to test on multiple devices, I do not want to take terribly long and I'm off center, so my drawings will look like garbage.
but feels good. This is a stock pencil, uh, rough pencil in Clip Studio. I downloaded a demo just to kind of fool around with it. And I have to tell you this immediately, uh, feels different. The pen tip alone, holding it, everything feels great. And one thing about the surface is it kind of tilts a little bit. See some pretty uh, decent pressure here. No trail off. Yeah, I have to say this is uh, worlds better. This is a, a major upgrade for me over the Surface Pen, uh, which as I've spoken about, I can't stand. Okay, one uh, thing I would be remiss if I didn't demonstrate is uh, the Windows Ink functionality. What is Windows Ink really? See this little pen here, okay? But what they've built into the actual Bamboo Ink Plus is if you click this thing once, it's essentially a shortcut to that functionality. So you see it's got my recently used applications, and if I click Sticky Notes, it's going to load this thing in. right and then essentially I can immediately start making notes now a lot of these things have some built-in functionality with Cortana and Siki and across your Windows devices that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing you can you know look up the features of, of Windows Inc later I just wanted to show that you know as advertised it works and in fact if you click it twice it brings up the new uh, snipping tool which you can screenshot and then you know actually draw you know on whatever you know whatever you're viewing with in windows which is pretty neat you know so if you're a college student or you know what have you or you know maybe you are an artist and yet you, you know you don't want to actually draw on the on the drawing itself and you want to put notes here or you're exchanging you know ideas and some concept art you know some comic book writers is you know coming up with a new design for a character and you know what do you think about this and you can kind of go back in here and, you know, draw your X's and say, you know, this is good. I like this, you know, plus this, change colors, all that. So, again, uh, works as advertised. Okay, we're on the uh, Lenovo Yoga, and immediately we see the uh, the, the pen is not working. Which, uh, the reason is, is because we need to unpair it from the Surface Book, and we need to now add it to this device. And you do that by holding this button down for six seconds. So it's flashing, you can add Bluetooth, it's a pen, there's the Ink Plus, and that's it, it's ready to go. Now what we might have to do, let's open up Clip Studio, you can see it's still not working. That's because you have to hit these two buttons now for two seconds, it'll flash, you probably didn't see it, and now here we are, we're good to go, it's as simple as that. Most likely, you're not going to be moving between devices all the time like this, so that's what I meant by it's, it's probably a one-time deal. So we're going to go mechanical pencil. Again, we're seeing a very similar result as far as speed. Cursor keeps up. It lags a little bit behind. Actually, you know what? That is because... Uh, 
This is not a powerful laptop and I am running Camtasia. So that is not the pen. Hopefully it'll catch up once it buffers. Let's clear it out. The Surface Book is considerably more powerful with an i7 in there. So that's why we weren't seeing it there. Yeah, surprisingly enough, well, maybe not. The Surface Book is newer. I feel like I'm getting uh, cleaner, um, slower lines on the Surface Book than I am this two or three year old Lenovo. Actually, it's about, probably about two, over two years now. And it's an i5 doing screen recording and it's also only got about 16 mega RAM but anyway not too bad definitely doable and these are none, none of the faults of the pen obviously and the one thing uh, if I showed you in clip studio paint on the uh, Lenovo yoga this is the pen they give you uh, I can freaking you know pick my teeth with this thing it's garbage it works you know it's convenient but you know, immediately upon laying down some strokes, this is the same brush I used with the Entreg. And again, unfortunately, this guy's really uh, struggling a bit. Even so, on a two-year-old i5, um, I'm getting really good strokes. We know with these older um, AES digitizers, they were kind of known for a little bit of jitter. And, you know, if you're going to draw off angle like I am, normally if I was inking, this thing would be flat. I can't highlight enough how much this pen feels better than the stock one. The other thing which I didn't mention, and hopefully the camera will pick it up because I switched them, but the pen is not completely round. I think one of the reasons it's comfortable, especially the way I hold it, is it's kind of triangle. So imagine this is the tip, right? And then the way your, your, your pen is gonna, your hand is gonna kind of rest there is your middle finger is on the flat part, right? And you're rolling around and then your index finger is sitting on the top of the triangle. So really, really feels comfortable. You know, you, like if you were using this for long hours and you know, long periods of time such, you're not gonna have any problems. So bringing up Windows Ink. You can see we get an equal pen experience for note taking. Hit the button twice. This is the perfect example of how this thing comes together. That's it, folks. So there's not really much I can add, and there's really nothing negative I can say. Uh, the pen does everything Wacom promises. It works on both devices, and my devices are actually a little bit older, so I would assume they would work even better on the newer devices that support higher pressure and such. I don't really have any suggestions for improvement other than maybe a couple of configurable buttons, but I understand why that's not possible. Now, for me, the jump from these uh, garbage pens included in one of these displays and this is, is not as much because I used to use the uh, Wacom Bamboo 2-in-1. So the jump from this pen and this pen, while an improvement, is not as much as the jump from like the Surface Pro pen, which is like, you know, drawn with a freaking crayon. And, you know, the garbage pens they include in these Lenovo's. So the improvements I can say they made from the 2-in-1 is the, th the thickness of the pen is better, feels better, it's not as thick. Um, it's not as light, it's Bluetooth, you don't have to worry about changing batteries. Um, and the tip itself, uh, th this is one thing that it is, is really, you can't say enough of compared to, you know, all this trash they include with these devices, including the Surface Pro Pen, is that they, if, it feels like a pencil tip. You know, that's the one thing I always like about Wacom pens, even over the iPad pen and all this other stuff, is that the pen tip itself, for some reason, they're the only ones that seem to be able to get this right, where you feel like you're drawing with a pen or a pencil tip um, and it, it just feels great. So anyway, uh, finally, we have a UPP pen that we can all go out and get there because even a mental case like me uh, doesn't need 10,000 pens that he has to carry around. So 
hopefully you enjoyed this review and if you want to see more of this stuff or you want to comment below you got any questions whatever leave them in the comments below and check me out in the next one thanks